Norwegian Sinoslo made a small black box with nothing inside of it and with one unsigned button on the front panel. It is quite expensive, almost like their amplifier, but for some reason it has already been awarded with the latest ASA award. So it's time to ask some serious questions. So friends, this is Hegel V10, a Scandinavian device designed to make sure that your turntable can communicate with the amplifier. Yes, this is first ever Hegel Phono stage. It's small, weird and full of contradictions. So why reviewers love it so much and why one European association awarded it with the best Phono stage in the world title? I don't know why the phono stage manufacturers conspired to make simple black boxes. Maybe so they couldn't outshine their masters' turntables, shining with the elegance of tone arms, sophisticated cartridges and all that. In the vinyl universe phono stages are often like Cinderella's. They do have the job, but they have no visual value in the system. V10 is no exception. Of course, it has a very high quality, like all the components that came out from the hands of Ben Halter. But as you can see, there is only one button, a white LED and a modestly painted Hegel logo, nothing else on the front panel. From the above, all this is covered with a piece of bent metal sheet with no decoration at all. That means absolutely not a single piece of luxury in the $1650 device. How dare you! The rear panel has a much cooler look. There are two sets of the highest quality connectors, including balanced ones, spaced apart on the sides. Then two cramped, uncomfortable deep switch pads and a heavy-duty ground terminal made from brass sits in the center. By the way, on this device you won't find the phono stage inscription anywhere. There are the Hegel inscription three times, Oslo two times, Norway two times and zero times phono stage. But at the bottom you'll find a large table with the settings of the deep switches which the Norwegians also made more tangled. It seemed insufficient to them that there are 10 small pieces in each set and they needed to be switched with a toothpick. It's not hard enough for audiophiles. We can easily tell the difference between a 10s and a 300s LP pressings, so small switches aren't a big deal for us. But Halter's team went one step further. They numbered each small switch from 1 to 10 from left to right on both channels. However, their functions are mirrored and, for example, switch number 3 on the right channel on the left channel has number 8. How do you like that, Wynel Geek? And to make the quest exciting, the Norwegians printed the tips that you can use if you aren't afraid to break your eyes. But as it turned out, they wrote these tablets in vain. You will find out everything a little later. Well, and by the way, just look, it has empty space in the case. They have sold us air. In terms of functionality, this thing is really ready for everything that humanity has ever created for listening to vinyl. V10 will gladly amplify the signal of both MM and MC cartridges of almost any specs. Moreover, it has two separate pairs of connectors for MM and MC cartridges, but you cannot connect two different tone arms at the same time, this is directly written on the case. So if you have a two tone arms, then either buy two of these or switch the cables. And one more thing. It has XLR outputs, but no XLR inputs. Yes, it's a rare feature, but here I have an amazing Phonolab step-up transformer that allows to carry a balanced signal from my cartridge and I can't connect it to V10 without an adapter that destroys the balanced connection. Why is it so imperfect? After all, Hegel are famous for their simplicity and convenience. Any of their devices that I was lucky enough to deal with were just great. They don't require any special approach and reading the manual. 
Any Hegel is always simple and clear. So, what's going on here? In fact, Ben Halter designed this phono preamp with one of the most important high-end principles in mind – building the shortest possible signal paths, and this leaves its mark on ease of use. Vinyl technology is old and imperfect, so you have to sacrifice something for the sake of impressive sound. Well, if you look at how it's built, you'll find the most hardcore audiophilia. Full dual mono, hand-picked pairs of FETs in the input stages and bipolar operation elements in the output stages. Moreover, four transistors are installed in parallel at the MC input, which makes it very quiet and eliminates feedback from the moving coils of your cartridge. And in general, inside entirely audiophile components, Hegel doesn't cut corners. And it has an external linear power supply with shielded transformer and separate independent sources for the MM and MC sections. It really connects with two connectors. Actually, that's why we see empty space here. The power board is simply separated from the high precision and sensitive audio path in this way, so that it doesn't bring any shit from your sockets into the sound of your first pressings. Well, now about the confusing switches. As it turns out, if you don't have some strange exotic cartridge, then all you need to do is flip one switch on each channel, indicating your MM or MC. Everything else is already configured by default for most types of cartridges. That's exactly what I did. Flip them to the MC position and that's it. The V10 is ready to work with two completely different turntables that I currently have. The only thing I would like them to pay for is the subsonic filter, which has to be activated with as many as four jumpers, two per channel. It's inconvenient, of course, but then the inconvenience ends. From the moment you press the button on the front panel, all its weirdness fades into the background, because it sounds just great. First, Hegel is very, very quiet, you won't hear familiar noise that always accompanies phono stages. Only if you start turning up the volume on the amplifier to the end, you will notice that it barely clicks somewhere in its depth. And this is good news for those of us who like to listen to subtle ambient, acoustic genres and everything that has fragile matters. For example, carbon-based lifeforms sound like from the abyss even in their quietest moments. Moreover, Hegel has so high resolution that you can be sure that it will help you show everything that your expensive MC cartridge with a micro-rich stylus is capable of. Secondly, and this is the coolest thing in my opinion, its sound is very, very rich. My strict Zix cartridge sounds noticeably more full-bodied through this Hegel. Listening to old Rush recordings now is just a pleasure of a different scale. A very significant increase in guitar weight, in the proximity of details and the scale of the picture compared to my Luxman Phono stage. Yes, Luxman is cheaper, more convenient and looks prettier, but Hegel has a better sound and I don't even want to measure it in money. This is a completely different level of sound from my turntable. And I have another cool turntable here, New Horizon with an interesting double plinth and an expensive clear audio cartridge. And this little Hegel with empty space in its case shows the difference and nuances of these turntables so clearly that you seem to be scanning them with some kind of super duper device. I swapped a clear audio cartridge for my Zix while testing this turntable, and with Hegel it was extremely easy to figure it all out. It clearly shows not only the character of the cartridges, but also the subtleties and signature of the turntable itself. And this turntable definitely has a signature. The V10 is so meticulous that you can really feel how it works, how it is damped and what exactly it brings to the sound of your records. It perfectly shows both the vacuum that my Microseki has and the special character of the Italian turntable. Hegel remains consistently warm and rich no matter what it is connected to. And it can be called coloration on the one hand. But on the other hand, 
In my conditions, this obvious warmth and richness never critically affected the character of the other components. You still absolutely clearly understand what every detail of your setup is. Hegel conveys exactly what comes prior to it, and it's really great. You have neutrality, transparency and completeness. The V10 has all of this in excess. I strongly advise to pay attention to it to those who love and use tube phono stages, but who prefers more accuracy. Because this Hegel is just as rich as tube phono stages are, and it gives a somewhat similar sound. But it is much more detailed, smooth and accurate. It doesn't distort the sound like tube devices. I'm not saying that tube distortion is bad. On the contrary, I'm all for it. But the problem with the tubes for me personally is that I can't listen to everything with a tube coloration. But with V10 I can listen to absolutely everything. And despite the fact that it's harsh and not very ergonomic, despite its flexibility of settings, this is a divine phono stage and this is really the best sounding phono preamp that I could listen to in my system. I bow, just a great thing, a reference in its class. And that's exactly what a Paragon vinyl setup deserves. <laughs>